Hello, I am Travis Weiser, Texas Soil Scientist and MLRA Office Leader. And I am Andrea Williams, MLRA Soil Scientist in Minnesota. This presentation is intended for NRCS leadership and managers and will give an introduction into how mid-infrared spectrometry, hereafter referred to as just MIR, can be used to analyze soils and how the Soil and Plant Science Division is implementing MIR for soil resource assessment. By definition, electromagnetic radiation in the mid-infrared or MIR region of the electromagnetic spectrum has wavelengths between 2,500 to 25,000 nanometers. The study of the interaction between matter and radiation is known as spectroscopy, or in the case of the interaction between soil and MIR radiation, MIR soil spectroscopy. Spectrometry refers to using that interaction to make the measurements of material property, such as soil carbon or clay content, where the root meaning of the suffix metry refers to measuring something. Because different soil properties absorb MIR radiation in different regions of the MIR spectrum, statistical methods can be used to calibrate those absorption features to known, conventionally measured soil properties such as carbon and clay. Once a calibration has been prepared to estimate a soil property, such as cation exchange capacity, from an MIR spectrum, that calibration can be used to estimate that same property for an unknown sample from its MIR spectrum. While not all soil properties lend, them, lend themselves to being calibrated to MIR spectra, many properties do, including ones that are important to soil taxonomy, and soil health assessment. A few examples of soil properties that lend themselves to successfully being calibrated to MIR spectra include cation exchange capacity, organic carbon, clay content, 15 bar water, pH, and calcium carbonate equivalent, to name a few. Two models of MIR spect spectrometers are currently used by NRCS. One is referred to as a production instrument for collecting large numbers of MIR spectra at the Kellogg Soil Survey Laboratory, and another is referred to as a single sample instrument used by field offices not needing the throughput capacity of the National Laboratory. Please note that no USD endorsement is implied or should be inferred when referring to particular brands or models. A Bruker Vertex 70, shown in the upper panel, is used at the Kellogg Soil Survey Laboratory, the KSSL, to build the National Library of MIR spectra that local NRCS field offices use to build calibrations for estimating properties of soils in their local areas. The Vertex 70 has a high throughput accessory that allows scanning many samples per day. Once calibrations are built, unknown samples collected in the target area can be MIR scanned at the field office using a sim single sample Bruker Alpha spectrometer shown in the lower panel. The alpha spec spectra are then processed through the aforementioned calibrations to rapidly estimate soil properties. The circular surface area scanned by these spectrometers is only six millimeters in diameter and homogenized fine ground soil materials are prepared to adequately represent the horizons that the samples came from. Building a national spectral library is feasible using the National Soil Archives housed at the Kellogg Soil Survey Laboratory. The archive represents decades of natural resource inventory. These archive samples were already analyzed by conventional methods of analysis for key soil properties such as carbon, clay, and cation exchange capacity. Scanning those same samples for their MIR spectra allows building calibrations at local or regional scale. This map illustrates the current coverage represented by the Kellogg Soil Survey Laboratory MIR Spectral Library in the United States. As the MIR library expands to underrepresented areas, more soil sample variability can be captured in the calibration, making MIR more broadly applicable with increased accuracy. How is the calibration built? 
Step one is to pick a soil property you want to estimate from a mid-infrared spectrum and to pick a geographic scale that the calibration should apply to. For example, suppose that you want to use MIR to estimate organic carbon in the surface horizons of Kansas. Step two is to query for archived samples that fulfill these criteria, in this case, archived samples collected from surface horizons in Kansas with previously measured organic carbon data. Step three is to collect MIR spectra on those archived samples. Step four is to calibrate the MIR spectra to the measured data using accepted statistical methods. Then, once a calibration is built, that calibration can be used to estimate organic carbon on newly collected soil samples from Kansas using their MIR spectra. As illustrated, the same MIR spectrum for a given sample can be used to estimate multiple soil properties once the calibrations are built. NSCS first piloted this technology in Salina, Kansas. The blue diamonds represent archived samples that were used to build calibrations for various soil properties. The pink check marks represent true test samples collected after calibrations were made. The true test samples were not used for calibration and were brought back to the Salina field office, then dried, sieved, ground, and MIR scanned on the alpha spectrometer. The MIR spectra collected on the alpha were then processed through the calibrations in order to estimate soil properties. To assess calibration performances, the true test samples were then sent to the Kellogg Soil Survey Laboratory for conventional measurement of soil properties being estimated from MIR. The next slide shows these amazing results. In each of these graphs, the Y or vertical axis represents estimated or predicted values of soil properties, including starting from top left to right, total carbon, organic carbon, cation exchange capacity, calcium carbonate equivalent, total clay, and 15 bar water. The x-axis represents the measured values of soil properties. Keep in mind that these graphs represent true test samples, which are not samples that were used to build the MIR calibration. These very attractive correlations and errors demonstrate the viability of using MIR spectra to estimate soil properties for purposes such as soil classification, survey, soil health assessment, and monitoring. The results of this pilot project have resulted in increasing investment in NRCS, by NRCS in MIR technology. In terms of overall objectives, the NRCS Soil and Plant Science Division supports useful innovation in soil analysis and MIR soil analysis is a prime example of that. MIR is a versatile tool for soil assessment, and compared with conventional methods of analysis, MIR offers field offices a fast, safe, no chemicals needed, and reliable estimates of key soil properties by using legacy samples and data. Equipment needed for an MIR laboratory includes a low temperature oven that's used to air dry soil samples from the field before they are sieved, a mill that is used to grind the air dry sieve material, and a spectrometer that's used to collect mid infrared spectra on the ground soil samples. As of 2021, the technology has been deployed to SDSD and state NRCS offices, which includes Bismarck, North Dakota, Clinton, Missouri, Turville, Texas, Maya West, Puerto Rico, Mill Hall, Pennsylvania, Missoula, Montana, Owensboro, Kentucky, Phoenix, Arizona, Richmond Hill, Georgia, Ruston, Louisiana, Salina, Kansas, Sonora, California, St. Paul, Minnesota, Collin, Connecticut, and Wasilla, Alaska. Offices are in various stages of setup, training, and development. The invitation is open for other NRCS offices to, to request to participate in this promising program in predictive science. 
Participating in our CS offices need at least one soil scientist who is available and interested to be fully trained on all aspects of the MIR method, including querying for its calibration data, building calibrations, and using the MIR laboratory equipment. The training is a five-day course. For the first year, up to 25% of a full-time employee's time will be needed to build and validate calibrations. After the first year, the field office should plan on 10% of a full-time employee's time to lead and maintain the MIR field office laboratory. This slide lists roles, roles and responsibilities, starting with the soil science and resource assessment, which promotes the development of emerging technologies as valuable field tools for evaluating soil properties for soil survey and health. Next in line is the Soil and Plant Science Division that allocates and approves resources to support and sustain development and deployment of emerging technologies. Next is the National Soil Survey Center that coordinates training and calibration validation services for the MIR program. Noteworthy is that using MIR to estimate soil properties was not something that NRCS invented. NRCS invested in MIR as a result of proofs of concept established by universities, institutions, and enterprises, many outside the USA. What the Kellogg Soil Survey Laboratory initially had to offer was its invaluable archive of samples that could be MIR scanned to build calibrations. The NRCS values its partnership with trailblazers and trendsetters, which led to NRCS involvement, such as the Consultative Group on International Agricultural Research World Agroforestry Center, based in Kenya, and the Woodwell Climate Research Center in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. Approximate costs to onboard MIR technology are shown here. The first year expenses cover equipment and validation services in which field offices send a percentage of the true test samples, in other words, samples collected from the field and not used to calibrate, back to the Kellogg Soil Survey Laboratory for conventional analysis to compare results with estimates afforded by MIR. Seeing is definitely believing when it comes to the performance of emerging technologies and validation of model performances with true test samples is a critical facet of the MIR Quality Assurance Program. The week-long training is currently provided by a well-qualified teaching cadre and imparts to every student the knowledge and know-how to query the database to build calibrations pertaining to selected geographic scales, to build calibration relationships between MIR spectra and measured soil properties, such as clay and soil carbon, and to use the technology to prepare and scan samples in order to, to estimate soil properties using the calibration. If you're interested in discussing this promising program in predictive analysis, please feel free to contact any one of those listed here. And this concludes our presentation. Thanks for your attention.